This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Coming up on a special edition of Market to Market, dairy producers, economists, and industry experts ponder the outlook for America's dairy sector. Funding for Market to Market is provided by Pioneer Hybrid, working with growers to help put the right product in each field. Pioneer, science with service, delivering success. From Madison, Wisconsin, the discussion continues at the Rural Economic Summit. Welcome to the Pile Center on the campus of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And we are hard by uh, beautiful uh, Lake Mendota, and it's uh, great to be here. Again, we're coming to you from the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences Economic Outlook Forum, and we've assembled a distinguished panel to answer questions from our live audience uh, here in Madison and those submitted to Market to Market over our website over the past few weeks. And here to help us assess the recession's impact and prepare for the future are some of the top experts in key sectors of the rural economy. David Opadal is an economist at the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. He directs the Chicago Fed Survey of Agricultural Banks on Land Values and Credit Conditions and publishes the results in the Ag Letter. Bill Bruins is the president of the Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation. He is also the general manager of Homeland Dairy, a family partnership consisting of 600 cows and 1,300 acres of cropland. And Bob Kropp, professor emeritus in the Department of Agriculture and Applied Economics here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. As a dairy marketing and policy specialist, Bob provides a monthly dairy situation outlook report. It's very widely read. And folks, we appreciate each and every one of you for joining us here uh, for our second Rural Economic Summit. Appreciate your insights in our first one and look forward to even more here as we continue this discussion about the future of dairy. As we did last time, Bob Kropp, we're going to start with you because your great uh, overview of the, of the dairy sector and a recap a little bit of, of two. 2009. And really, we kind of want to go back to 07 when dairy prices really started to take off. We saw a lot of expansion. We saw some bank lending out in California where, where there were uh, uh, literally uh, interest-only cow loans just to see some expansion out there. We saw that through 2008 and the great growth in, in virtually all commodity prices. Huge demand for milk overseas. And then a, a correction, to say the least, uh, as we hit uh, the first part of uh, 2009, the first quarter of 2009, prices plummeted and the dairy industry really went into a, a short-term tailspin. Volatility is the name of the game in the dairy world now. Well, yes, I mean, this was, however, unusual. Uh, most of the past price declines, the 2000, 2002, 2002, and 2006, was because we were producing relatively more milk. We were here, too, uh, in 2007, 2008. But the export market absorbed that. We're producing domestically in an export, and we lost that. Uh, that dumped about 5 billion pounds more milk on the domestic market. I had a clear and drove those prices down, and so... To get a recovery required a reduction in milk production, which we're now seeing happening. It's happening nationwide, not so much here in the, in the state of Wisconsin or the Midwest, where you, uh, in this state, still continue to produce more milk. That's true. Actually, all the Midwest states, where you look at Minnesota, not much as Wisconsin, but Iowa, South Dakota, and that. And uh, due to some uh, expansion that occurred here, looking at cheaper feed up here versus uh, area that got to buy their feed. And we're an area here because a good share of our milk goes into cheese, higher value products. And our farmers get a higher price for the milk than they do out in the West. That's true. Uh, let's also talk about the fact that uh, obviously dairy pricing has changed. The old uh, federal milk marketing orders are changed. They're certainly less significant. It's much more of a market-driven enterprise. And in an industry where you sell it or smell it, you got to be a good marketer. That's right. I mean, you look at it. If cows are milked every day. That milk's got to go through the system. It's got to be processed, sold. You can store powder for a while, butter, but basically things got to move. Cheese becomes new cheese, age cheese. So. Uh, it doesn't take big changes either on the supply or demand side to cause great changes in prices, and that's what we got with the volatility. It used to be the government put a relatively high floor under that price, but since the mid-1990s, that's been pretty well irrelevant, and so market forces have been driving these prices. All right, and we're going to talk to a producer here uh, who is uh, involved in all this and uh, affected by it, also leads the General Farm Organization. We'll talk to Bill in just a moment. Dave Openall, uh, give us your uh, 
a summation, if you will, of what's happening. Now you you cover the uh, ag sector in the in the central Midwest, uh, the Chicago Feds district, very important district, and, and one that's certainly seen huge profitability, huge net farm income, 2008, much smaller number for 2009. Yes, the. Um Net farm income dropped off about 35% for the United States, according to USDA numbers, from 2008 to 2009. And that stream of earnings was especially hurt in the livestock sectors, including, obviously, dairy. The um, overall future looks better for 2010, with some prices rising, but at the same time, it's um, going to be interesting to see how everything falls out this year. Well. We, we know we're off to uh, sluggish grain prices. Uh, certainly uh, 450 corn is gone and we've seen a 50 cent pullback in corn prices. Bean meal was down $5 a ton just this week. So some lower input costs uh, over on the livestock side and maybe a little bit better demand, at least if Bob's correct on uh, what's happening on, on the dairy side and, and what's happening on the beef, pork and, and poultry side as well. So, so uh, the lenders that, the, that you talk to, that you survey for your letter, how would you describe their, their outlook for the livestock sector going into 2010? Well, it was not so um, promising about six months ago, and so the sentiments then were fairly negative. I think they've improved a lot since then as hog and, and dairy prices in particular have risen. For the cattle sector, it's still a little bit more troubling that the prices are down and um, not following the trend of the rest of the livestock sector. Certainly the um, overall um, sentiment would be cautious, I think. Even with the um, increases, there's still a lot of um, negative um, spillover from previous years. So there's some problems with the cash balances and needing to allow the balance sheets to um, return and build up working capital before the operations are really in a better fiscal situation. Uh, liquidations are something I know that you track uh, and some of your lenders were looking uh, to see perhaps more liquidations particularly and we've seen in the beef cattle trade we've, we've seen uh, a lot of dispersions beef cow dispersions very small cow herd out there to begin with but again a very sluggish demand side on the supply side for beef. Well it has been I think that with the economy in the United States starting to recover a little bit, as well as the global economy um, moving up, that will hopefully boost the um, restaurant industry as well as export markets. And between the two of those, maybe there will be some improvement in beef demand, you know, especially when people start eating out again more. And that's one of those um, issues that um, we would hope would improve in this year. All right. And hopefully that's going to be the case. Certainly the early, early indicators are that way. Uh, Bill Brun, you're a dairyman, and uh, you are uh, 600 cows is a, is a darn good involved business with your two sons. Uh, talk about uh, 2009 for you and your operation. Obviously uh, uh, pretty sophisticated marketers, and uh, you folks are trying to take advantage of this volatility when it occurs, right? Absolutely, but any dairyman that, that lived through 2009 and didn't recognize the importance of international markets uh, uh, really had his head in the sand. And, and as, a, <clears throat> as a, a farm organization, uh, we're really focused on, on what the marketplace can do for us. And our current uh, dairy policy is, is market-driven, but it's domestic market-driven. And we have to figure out a way to capture the international market with, with our dairy policy moving forward. If you look at trade, uh, uh, two-thirds of our ag trade goes to Mexico and Canada, and, and, and we have to make sure we're, we're, we're staying on friendly relations with, with our two major trading partners. Trade agreements uh, all over the world are going to be increasingly important. Uh, milk proteins are in, in increasing demand in countries like China. Uh, that's where our future is, and that's what we have to focus on capturing. All right. Mr. President of the Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation, do you think that uh, that word's gotten out there now? Well, you know, our organization spent a good deal of time uh, discussing supply management uh, and, and seeing if there wasn't a, a, a good, easy way to control supply. But if, if you look around the world, uh, it's never been easy and it's never really worked. The EU is trying to wean their dairy farmers off of supply management now. It's, it's an ugly scene. Uh, so we continue as an organization to stay focused on, on the market driving our price. 
All right. Where do you see the greatest opportunities? You mentioned China, Asia, certainly. I mean, this was a part of the world that for years I thought was lactose intolerant. They want our product. Uh, they, uh, they need it. Uh, they're growing middle class. 100,000 people a day join the middle class around the world. That's a huge market. Well, I think one of the one of the benefits we have uh, dairying in Wisconsin is that we're, we're very diversified. We, we produce about 600 different types of cheeses. Uh, th there, is, there is an untold number of products yet to be developed uh, that the world is looking for. And uh, I, I believe we're, we're going to be flexible enough and, and nimble enough uh, moving forward as a dairy industry to capture some of that world market. Yeah, China's a big one, obviously, uh, but uh, again, tied to uh, the economy uh, there as well. All right. Talk about the flip side in addition to a lot of milk production. Uh, 2009 from a crop production standpoint and a hay production standpoint. We had good crops in Wisconsin. We really did. Uh, our dairy is going to be supported just fine by the crops that we grew. Um, we, we feed a lot of high moisture corn. Uh, and and this, year, year for that this, this year, year it's a great year high for moisture high moisture corn. corn. Yeah, so so uh, we're, we're doing just fine with, with our dairy cattle and, and uh, they're, they're milking well and, and uh, they're healthy. Uh, we're looking forward to a, a good year in 2010. All right, hay production good too? We had a good hay crop uh, and, and obviously uh, over the winter we always get concerned about uh, how much we might lose to winter kill but uh, so far I think we've had good winter weather and uh, uh, good Lord willing, uh, we'll have some uh, healthy alfalfa plants uh, come spring. I'm sure you will. Bob Crop talking about that, though. The, the fact that uh, so many of these uh, entities here in, in Wisconsin are like Bill, so they're producing their own grain, their own forage products, and, and uh, they can roll right along. Even through a year like 2008 where we had $7 corn and $16 beans, uh, we can still make it work. We could because uh, production cost was up, but not as much as those people were buying the grain, and when you consider most of that's green is, is you know, in central Iowa or someplace. Mm -hmm. Got to be trucked clear across the country to Idaho or California. We don't experience that. We got the distiller's grains and some byproducts here that are close by, and it gives us some real advantages, yes. All right. I want to talk about the food and fuel issue, Bob, because I know that was certainly one that uh, some dairy groups were very much opposed to the whole idea of biofuels uh, because of the increased demand for corn and increased prices. Obviously, we've had a couple of years we've produced uh, in excess of 10 billion gallons of ethanol, 4.5 billion bushels of the corn crop. And as the USDA reported uh, a week and a half ago, we don't seem to have any problem having corn left over. That's right. Well, I think what we're saying here, due to the ethanol biomass industry, we'll have a higher uh, grain cost. I mean, corn probably $3 a bushel above, maybe not back to the 7 like we had. Uh, so higher uh, production costs, and that's why I think you're seeing that uh, long run a uh, higher milk price, higher cattle hog prices uh, have to be to support a higher uh, input cost due to some of that. That's right. Talk also about, about the fact that we have seen some movement out of California, out of the West Coast, coming towards the Midwest and Mid-South regions uh, uh, to, uh, to move those enterprises here. A lot of issues out there, environmental uh, and otherwise, but the one you touch on, of course, is the feed issue too. Feed is there, and uh, uh, there's in land uh, areas, uh, and even in California, one thing that slowed their production, uh, they lost a big cheese plant, that's part of it. But it has not been the most conducive environment to build a new cheese plant. So you see a major cheese company like it was Loprino or Hillmar or whatever, building in Texas or even Colorado, and uh, come this way where milk production's growing, and they look like we'll continue to grow. So we look at a boat on the processing side, but up here in Wisconsin, also right now, uh, we're looking at a lot of our plants are full, so we're looking at the need to invest in the processing side. But uh, uh, yeah, they have located here, and uh, not that California is done growing, but you're not in the whole West. You're not even Idaho. You're not going to see the growth that they had. I think you're going to see the Upper Midwest, and you'll see uh, states maybe like Kansas or some of those come a little bit. But uh, uh, we have a strong infrastructure here, a strong processing. We're a good location for marketing as well. We can ship cheese to Dallas, Texas, uh, less distance than California can or the Northeast. So a lot of pluses here. And so there's a lot of optimism in the dairy industry. And we're, we're, you know, we're hearing processors talk about investment now. For a few years ago, they were chasing a shrinking milk supply. They weren't going to put another dollar processing. And now it's the other, the other way uh, coming back. So it looks good. The dairy industry has always done a great job promoting their product. Um, and uh, certainly that's been a factor here. The Got Milk campaign, some of those issues. Do you think we'll start to see this fluid milk consumption start to improve? Well, actually, it picked up. It went down. You know, 
twenty high tell bill here a twenty dollar bill creates some problems on the demand side right uh, ten dollar at the farm side but uh, uh, with a switch the more home eating uh, actually fluid milk sales which went down one percent in two thousand eight is up more than one percent uh, in two thousand nine and that will probably continue of course some of that Eating have affected the beef industry too, not eating as much in the restaurant, but actually fluid sales are up. But fluid sales only represent about 28% of the milk right. use. Uh, it's in the manufacturing, the cheese industry really is a primary driver, and of course that's what we do up here. Bill mentioned the milk proteins, uh, domestic market, well, international market, uh, the whey proteins and protein isolates and all that uh, for developing countries as well as the developed countries. Uh, so. Uh, there are some real opportunities in product development and marketing, and uh, we do some of that up here. Absolutely. Growing a, a growing middle class is certainly good news for meat, milk, and eggs, sure. and uh, the milk part is certainly covered here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Dave, let's I talk for you a little bit just before we go to some questions, and, and that is uh, uh, general economic outlook. We mentioned reduction in, in farm income, but we had a huge balloon in farm income in 2008, so the 2009 reduction uh, isn't that big of a pull. Going into 2010, lower input costs for the livestock side, lower fertilizer inputs, uh, maybe a little bit higher fuel price for, for 2010. Uh, should look like a fairly strong, underpin uh, the agriculture economy fairly well. Well, it's, we don't know for sure yet because corn and soybean prices have been coming down enough that that, that could be a factor. Although there, again, um, a good marketer will be able to take advantage of pricing opportunities that were already present so they can overcome that. I think that um, it would seem that the indications are that net cash income would be poised to increase slightly this year, but I, I wouldn't think that um, we'd see a big bounce back. All right. Uh, I think one, one of the things that people are curious about, uh, uh, Bob mentioned uh, Secretary Bilsack, uh, there was $350 million that went out to the, the dairy industry uh, direct from the USDA. What kind of an impact does that have, do you think? Uh, it, it's a drop in the bucket when it comes to total, total uh, farm income and for the dairy sector. Well, it's a, it's a nice um, indicator for people that something is trying to be done at the national level and um, it gets people thinking more positively so it's it, it isn't a huge amount like you mentioned but at the same time the rebound in exports would be a much bigger factor I think. All right well let's go to our uh, our audience we have very erudite group here at the Pyle Center on the University of Wisconsin Madison campus we have a young man there with a question sir tell us who you are. Uh, Corey Geiger with Hordes Dairyman Magazine. 2009 hit the uh, dairy and swine and hog sector quite hard. How long do you think it's going to take for the balance sheets to heal uh, following this situation? Good question. Bob? Well, I think for some farmers, a loss of equity, it take at least a couple of years, maybe longer. You're not going to do it in one year. So it'll, it's going to take uh, a couple of years to build back some of that loss of equity and some of those. The, and Bill is not going to take as long. It's a risk management. But overall, someone's down. It's you're not going to do it because milk prices. First part of the year, you're getting into that 15, 16. That's just back a good cash flow payment. It's not building back a lot. We got to get to that 17, 18. That'd be towards the end of the year and hopefully into 2011. Bill, you want to follow up on that? I think. Bob is pretty good at analyzing uh, income and expense, and, and uh, I think he's pretty close to being uh, uh, dead on, on on his forecast. I just hope that his forecast is, is guaranteed like he said it is. That's right, it's 100% guaranteed. And, uh, because we budgeted for, for an average price of $16 a hundredweight for this year. Perfect. Uh, last year, our average price uh, pay price was $12.31. And that includes those lows that we had in there, too. That's right. Yeah. All right, yeah, fully guaranteed. He's an emeritus professor, David, so we expect that to be 100% accurate. All right, here's, here's another follow. All right, Bob, let's take this one, too. This is one that uh, came in from one, of our, from one of our viewers through the Internet. Can the government react fast enough to correct economic problems, or will the markets correct themselves? I think you've talked about this in a general way. Well, I guess they say high prices. You're high for low prices, you're low prices. It's the market's going to do it. Uh, there's very little. I mean, the government tries certain things like uh, buy up more cheese, which they plan to do, and you know uh, the export incentive program and a few things like that. But basically, it's going to take the market forces, and we're seeing those happening, and actually seeing uh, some nice recovery because of stronger market forces, both some stronger domestic demand, export market, and some decline in production. 
the government uh, checks that were sent out, the 350 million that the secretary signed, it really came in, I think, a day when we first broke 1550 on class three milk prices. So they had discussed it back when it was nine dollars mailbox price, and the price recovered. That's when the checks came out. Sure. So maybe that answers the speed of the government. All right, Bill. Here's a question for you. Uh, what's the and, and Farm Bureau has been a, very much involved, very sensitive to the fact that we have an aging farm demographic as far as producers are concerned. A uh, number of young farmer programs the Farm Bureau is involved in. Uh, give us your thoughts on the outlook for young and beginning farmers to get into the dairy industry in 2010. I wished I were that young again because I think there is tremendous opportunity moving forward in the dairy industry. Uh, financing, you know, getting, getting collateralized is obviously uh, going to be a challenge, but it's always been a challenge. and, and uh, uh, we, we have a great deal of, of family uh, farms that are passed on from one generation to the next. We're going to continue to need to depend on that. Uh, and and I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, people my age now actually encouraging their kids uh, uh, to, to farm. And, and, and that wasn't that way a generation ago. It certainly wasn't. 20 years ago in the 80s, I remember being in Wisconsin and, and a lot of frustration about that, mm -hmm. inability for young people to get started. You're saying the opportunity is there now. Yeah, we're, you know, uh, they're saying that there just aren't young farmers out there. We, at our annual convention uh, uh, last fall, we, we had just about 300 young farmers uh, out of about 1,100 people. So, so they're there and, and, and they're excited. Uh, they have a passion to farm and, and uh, uh, there isn't anybody going to be able to hold them back. Dave, what about the lenders? Are they supportive of, uh, of this? Obviously, you've got to have a lot of things when you come to the table to talk to that lender about getting in any business started, but particularly one that's uh, cyclical in nature and volatile as the dairy industry. Well, I think most lenders are very um, encouraging of farmers and you know, young farmers to get established because that's going to be their next generation of loans. They need to be able to build that business for the future and so I think there's a lot of encouragement, but the problem, of course, is that they can't extend loans without the proper credit conditions. And being able to establish that is important. So it's great that farm organizations have helped young farmers get started. The USDA has programs to try to help young and beginning farmers. Um, you have the farm credit system that has a mandate to help with that as well. So there are some resources out there, and maybe it's a challenge to get going, but um, I, I think people want to help support you because we want to build a strong industry and keep it going. All right, and one, uh, one question that uh, uh, I think is, uh, has a good uh, uh, bearing to what it is we're talking about here, uh, and Dave, this is for you, is what areas of the economy does the Fed see the most improvement in? The economy seems to be improving in the manufacturing sector. Um, there's been a lot of inventory out there, and that's something that um, has been improving. Um, it, it, that uh, the inventories were drawn down, is, and now they're starting to be built back up. Um, so there's a lot of um, things that are happening, but at the same time, um, you know, we, it, it's kind of ragged right now. So we'll have to see how things move forward. All right. Well, of course, interest rates are key to all that, and I suppose you don't want to give us any insights on what you think is going to happen there. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. But I have to ask, Bill. You, know, you might right. find someone who will give you something. Uh, we're getting close time to, to wrap up. I want to come back, uh, Bob, to you one, uh, one final time and, and talk a little bit about uh, you've had a long career following these markets, and you've had a long career following a lot of uh, producers. There's been a lot of leadership, certainly from the dairy industry that's come from, from the state of Wisconsin. Um, give us the state of the industry now as we go into 2010 for the, the dairy industry from the state of Wisconsin standpoint. Well, we're in pretty good shape, I mean, because we had two good years, 2007, 2008, and so that put dairy farmers in a pretty good position to weather the storm. we got some problems out there, no question about it. But overall, uh, we're, we're very solid financially. Uh, there are some individual farmer loans, but overall real good. Things are improving, and uh, price-wise substantially, and uh, so you just have to say we're looking for at least you know three or four dollar at minimum, probably improvement in average milk price. Uh, <laughs> I think we're writing that's true, that one down. That's, well, well, you know, yeah, that's good. Uh, so really, uh, there's a lot of optimism. I, I take it off for producers themselves. We got two farm organizations here, Professional Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, Wisconsin Dairy Business Association, it started a few years ago. They were sick and tired of doom and gloom. Yeah. And uh, they themselves to do, uh, talk to one another how to do things, change ideas, and educational programs. 
Uh, and plus a very positive state legislator here that passed some legislation to foster investment tax credit setting legislation to uh, foster growth in industry. So uh, from, the, you know, from the state legislator and farmers and that, there's a lot of optimism uh, uh, long term for the dairy industry in Wisconsin. Very good to hear. Uh, you mentioned professional dairymen and, and the Dairy Business Association. I, I was here a year ago for the professional yeah, dairymen. Right. What an excellent meeting. Boy, what yes. a place to get charged up and hear good ideas. And that was right at the nadir of these, yep. of these low prices. Absolutely. Uh, David, same question. Uh, wrap up 2010. Uh, as, as you look forward into your crystal ball, how do you see it? Well, it looks like it's a more promising year. It seems like we're headed in a direction where dairy is more positive, the hog industry is more positive. Cattle may be lagging a little bit, but at the same time, um, good operators will be able to you know, persevere, and we hopefully will see um, a lot of improvement this year. All right, we'll look forward to it. Appreciate your insights very much. Phil Bruns, our, our, our dairyman and uh, president of the largest general farm organization in Wisconsin, uh, your thoughts for 2010. You always make a prediction of the five most important things. What do you think is going to happen in 2010? Oh, there, absolutely. The the economy uh, is is going to be crucial in in 2010 for for the entire uh, ag industry in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, you know, 59 and a half billion dollars of economic activity. Uh, we have a lot of diversity. Uh, we we have a, a lot of vitality, uh, and and, and uh, we've got good land. Uh, we've got access to to plenty of water. Uh, a lot of great things going for us. Uh, but we have to seize the opportunities that are there, and, and uh, right. you, you're darn right, that positive attitude uh, is important. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Appreciate that comment. Bob, thank you. Dave, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. That's going to wrap up the expanded discussion here at our special Rural Economic Summit. Again, I want to thank all of our panelists and, of course, our audience here in Madison for joining us. And, of course, we want to remind you that we'll produce two more of these special road editions of Market to Market in the months ahead. Future programs slated to be held in Nebraska and Kansas, and you're invited to join the discussion by submitting your questions and comments at our website. We'll also be posting new content to our blog in the days and weeks ahead, and you're invited to join the discussion. And of course, be sure to join us for Market to Market next week when we'll return to our regular format. Till then, thanks for watching. I'm Mark Pearson. Have a great week. Drink more milk. Market to Market is a production of Iowa Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content. Funding for Market to Market is provided by Pioneer Hybrid, working with growers to help put the right product in each field. Pioneer, science with service, delivering success. This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.